as you can see in this question, you're given a particle P that is moving along the X axis. We are given the velocity of that particle. This is a trigonometric function and T goes from zero to pi. So we're also given a initial condition. So when T is equal to zero, the position is five. We're given another particle Q that is also moving along the X axis. The velocity of the particle is also given by a function that is basically a product of a polynomial and then a power of a number, 1.25. The domain is the same, zero pi, and we're also given an initial condition. We need to answer four parts for this second question. So without further ado, let's get started. And before that, notice that this question requires the knowledge and the relation between position, velocity, and acceleration of a particle, and how to find concepts like total distance traveled. All right, so let's start with part A. So for part A, we must find the positions of the particles P and Q when T is equal to one. So basically here we need to use FTC. So for the solution, we use the fundamental theorem of calculus to obtain the following. So we're going to have two positions. We're going to call X at P, the position of the particle P. So we know that XP at one minus XP at zero by the fundamental theorem of calculus is the integral from zero to one of the derivative of this position XP. But what is the derivative? The derivative is just the velocity at time T. Excellent. That means that XP, so the particles position at one is equal to XP at zero. Remember that is given, so that is five plus the integral from zero to one of the velocity. The velocity is just the sine of T to the 1.5 DT. All right, so we plug these numbers into the calculator and we obtain our answer. This is going to be approximately 5.371. Excellent. So we apply the same reasoning for the position X, but for the particle Q. So now XQ at one minus XQ at zero gives us the integral from zero to one of the velocity of the par particle Q at T. So again, we're given the initial condition. So XQ at zero is, let me just remember what the value is, is equal to 10. So 10 plus the integral from zero to one, and then we use V, V is T minus 1.8 times 125 raised to the power of T dt. Excellent, after plugging in these values into a calculator, we get the following approximation 8.564. So that's going to be part A. So part B is quite interesting. We must determine whether the particles are moving towards each other or away from each other when T is equal to one. So to do that, we're going to compute a couple of things. So for the solution, we're going to compute the velocity of the particle P when T is equal to one. So this is basically plugging uh, one in here. We get approximately 0 0.8. 841 and now we have to look at the position so the position of this particle when t is equal to 1 was found to be approximately 5.371 now notice that the velocity is positive all right so what is the meaning of that that means p is moving to the right because the velocity is just positive now, this is the first part that's regarding P. Now, regarding Q, what is the velocity of Q at one? So we just plug that value in here. That's going to be one minus 1.8 times 1.25 raised to the power of one. And as you can see, this is negative. So this value is exactly after plugging into a calculator gives us minus one and this is negative. Actually. We knew it was negative because of this sign over here. And remember that the position of this particle Q when T is equal to one is approximately from part A, 8.564. So basically, if you think about it, 
uh, the particle Q is to the right of particle P, right? Because this is eight, but the velocity is negative. So that means that Q is moving to the left and P is moving to the right. In other words, they are moving towards each other. Again, if you want to convince yourself about this fact, notice that the position at one is five. Let's say is five and the velocity is positive. So basically we have here five and P is moving to the right. But Q is, has position approximately eight and the velocity is negative. So Q is moving to the left. So they are moving towards each other. All right, so that's part B. So for part C, we must find the acceleration of Q, the particle Q when T is equal to one. So to do that, we just have to remember that the acceleration of the particle Q at T is just the derivative of the velocity of that particle at T. Now, we plug in T equals to one to obtain the value we're interested in. A Q at one is equal to V prime of Q at one. Again, we plug these values into a calculator and we get approximately 1.027. Now we know on the other hand, the velocity of Q at one is equal to minus one. Now notice that this is positive, this is negative. And uh, as a conclusion, the product of the acceleration at one and the velocity at one is negative. So they have different signs. We can say therefore that the speed of Q is decreasing. All right, so this brings us to the end of part C. Part D asks us to find the total distance traveled by that particle P over the interval of time going from zero to pi. So for the solution, remember that the total distance traveled is just the integral over the given interval from zero to pi of the absolute values, the magnitude of the velocity, in this case of the particle P. So as long as we are in good shape here, uh, we just have to plug in the values and find what this is it. So what is VP? So this is the integral from zero to pi of the absolute values of sine of t to the 1.5 dt. After plugging in the values, uh, we obtain approximately 1.931. And this is the total distance traveled. So we can conclude by saying that the total distance traveled on that interval is the number we obtain, one point approximately, 931. This is the end of part D. Hey guys. Make sure to check out our server at Discord. Here, you can hook up with guys who are on the way to nail down the AP test just like you. Plus, tons of study resource packages. Did I ever mention what's really cool here? We've got one-on-one -on -one QA service for you guys for absolutely free. I will see you guys here. Click the link down to the comment area or the link on the homepage of YouTube to join me.